going on a road trip. Where the hell am I? This is just ridiculous. Oh, there's a stump. I need to sit down. I've been walking for miles in this snow. Oh, man, can you believe this? Where's warm, sunny Florida at when you need it? Well, I see a cabin over there. The old guy told me if I wanted to come in and warm up and sit by the fire, we could talk. So, I think I'm going to take him up on it. I just think a warm fire would sound good right now. Oh, I can't wait. So why don't we go in there and sit down and we'll just have a little chit-chat. Have a little talk. A warm fire. I'm coming right up. Well, wasn't that just great? So, Today's video, since we're warming up by this nice warm fire, and boy does it feel good. Nothing like a warm fire on a cold winter's day, I tell you. Feels good on the back. Mm. May have to go outside a little while and get another log though, but for right now, she's doing pretty good. So let's talk about something today. It's a new year, right? 2021's here whole bunch of stuff that's going on in this country, in this world, in everyday life, all kinds of things. We have the pandemic, people out of work, unemployment rates up, um, people standing in line at food banks because they don't have food, people starving to death. Why? So today's video, since it's a new year, we're going to start this video out and it's going to be on how to talk to or introduce prepping to your friends and family, which can be very difficult, which can be a big challenge for some people in some areas with their family members, you know, because a lot of people are set in their ways. So let's just talk about that for a minute. Maybe I can give you a few pointers. So, over me doing a little bit of research and everything, two-thirds of the American population state that, you know, uh, they just recently started prepping, probably due to the pandemic. I think that really kick-started a lot of people, especially when we all saw the stores and stuff empty. But we've all seen that, so we don't have to really go too much on that. It's fact of life, it's proof, but it really kick-started a lot of people to be ready for if something else happens. So in 2021, if you're going to be trying to discuss or talk with your friends or family and to get them to see maybe what you do or to try to get them to prepare even a little bit, Maybe they don't have to do as much as you or me or anybody else. But if they start and maybe they can see that it's a little bit easy. It's not too bad. Oh, fire's getting warm. But anyways, number one, I think, is um, you really, I guess you want to sit down with them and maybe discuss with them really the a probable situation that they've been in, gone through, or know somebody that's been in and gone through. You know, a lot of people, we all have different things that we prep for. I prep for hurricanes. You may prep for blizzards, ice storms. You may prep for earthquakes, floods, mudslides, avalanches. The list goes on and on. Point being is, is everybody can relate to a situation where at one point in their life they actually had to deal with something and had to survive something. No matter where you live. Tornadoes. It doesn't matter. You're not in Kansas anymore. What I'm trying to say is is you can relate to a certain situation or subject that can get your foot in the door to get people to realize why they want to start prepping. Oh, you remember back when we got the blizzard of 78 and 
Jesus, I remember my dad had to walk two miles in snow up over his shoulders to try to get food, was gone for six hours. That's actually a true story. That was my father in the blizzard of 78. Now, I'm giving away my age here, folks. But, hey, point being, you can relate to some type of a situation to get your foot in the door to talk about why it is important to prep. Now, number two is, I would think if you could really get people involved, I think more it'd be more of your real close-knit friends or family members. Um, nowadays, a lot of people will have, you know, you have a Sam's card, you have a BJ's card, a Costco, all the big box stores. But you're buying in bulk. And a good way to get people to um, really trick them into starting to prep, if you want to put it that way. Because sometimes you have to beat around the bush a little, if you know what I'm saying. Or as I call it, just BS, which I'm really good at. Ask my wife. Um, but the point being is, you go into a big box store. You see a great deal. All right, so you're going to get 50 rolls of toilet paper for 20 bucks. Just using this as an example, I don't know if that's actually a thing, all right? Just an example. But 50 rolls of toilet paper for 20 bucks. Boom. You text your brother, you, you text your mother, you, you text your, your best friend. Hey, I ran across this deal. You want to split it with me? So you're each going to get 25 rolls for 10 bucks. I'm saying and you can do that with all different types of products at those big box stores so you kind of get like a little I don't know if you want to call it a club um, um, you know and then when they go tell them if they see something really good or a great buy you know text you let you know you may split it with them. so now you got everybody and your little circle of friends and family that are looking for those great deals when they go into those stores and they're texting you and little do they know they are prepping. See where I'm going with this? You have to get people to think that they're not doing something but they're actually doing it. Got it? I mean, it, it is what it is. But in the long run, you're getting them to prep. You know, um, another great thing, I think, would be um, kind to, you know, you, you want to try to really band together, I guess would be a good word, I, um, with your friends and family and stuff, and make sure that you have somewhat of a good relationship, a good rapport, uh, especially with, like, neighbors and, and friends. More than likely, hopefully, you have a pretty good rapport with most of your family. Now, I know some people don't, so you don't have to hate, send me all the hate mail that you don't get along with your family or nothing like that. I, I get it, okay? Um, but anyways, you know, if you have a, um, a, some way that you can band together and you can do stuff together, um, maybe you can help pitch out. Like right now, a lot of like the food banks and stuff. Just give you a perfect example. I know a lot of the food banks and everything, you know, they're looking for any volunteers to come in and help out to pass out these, all this food that they're passing out, you know, hundreds of tons of food that are being passed out all over the country on a daily basis to all the people that do not have any food that are waiting in these long lines, which we really haven't seen much in the news because of all the other crap that's going on. So... The stuff that's really happening that is affecting a lot of people is kind of been put to the wayside. But they still need the help out there. So a food bank would be a really great place for you to band together as a group, your family circle, your circle of friends, or a circle of friends and family, however you want to do it, and get together with them and do something. You know, this is all on how to 
talk to and introduce prepping to your, your friends and family and to get them to, to realize that there's more to it than just going to the store, buying 10 cans of this, 10 cans of that, 10 cans of this, uh, some extra toilet paper, extra whatever. There's more to this whole thing, okay? As a prepper, more than likely, you're not going to be a selfish type of person. You're going to be a giving type person, which brings me to my next thing that I think would be really cool to do. Um, it's probably not like a top gift that you maybe uh, would want to receive, but around Christmas time, birthdays and stuff like that, you know, new marriages, you know, somebody just got married, just had a baby, something like that. Basically, really, you want to gift them preparedness products. Make them up an emergency backpack. Um, if they're having kids or whatever else, you know, maybe it's a good time to get them a nice emergency kit. Maybe it's a good time to... Boy, that fire's still getting warm. Oh, nice and warm now, I can tell you that. Whew! But maybe it's a good time to, you know, gift them something that they can really put to good use. Maybe your son or daughter just got their first brand new car or something like that. So get them a gift bag or a to-go bag with emergency supplies that could be in it. You know, anything. It could be flares, it could be battery backups, um, whatever you want to put in it. And, you know, I mean, yes, it's not like the most enticing gifts that you're going to be giving somebody, obviously. But it's the gift that shows that you care and this is what you do. Just a point. Just a point. You know, <clears throat> um, something else that I would really, uh, I want to touch on. Um, I've got two little things left and, and they're really big. Okay, um, practice what you preach. And by that I mean show them how to, show them you know, how to do something. Um, maybe you have survival gear. Maybe you bought some survival gear and everything else. Well, survival gear is only good enough and only really good if you know how to use it. If the emergency is already there and is happening, you... Not knowing how to use emergency gear, it, you're not really helping anybody out in your family, friends, in your little circle. So you want to make sure that if you're going to preach to somebody that they need to do this, they need this, they need to buy this, they need to have this, and so on and so forth, you want to make sure that you know how to use it properly. And you know how to set it up. You know how it works, you know what the buttons do, the whole nine yards here. Because we all can go out and I could buy the most expensive camera or or whatever else and if I don't know how to use it or what all the features and everything, you know, what it does, what good is it? You have to know how to use your products and everything else. You have to be able to, you know, like I said, practice what you preach. You know, so maybe it means that you go out in your backyard and you practice setting up whatever it may be, your tent. You practice up setting up a, a triage area. You practice whatever your niche is, you know, whatever your survival gear is setting up your solar panels and hooking them up to your, your your battery banks and charging them. You know, you set up like a little makeshift camp in your backyard, but you're practicing what you have. The same way with, you know, if you're putting up food and everything else. Like, I would say my, my one little niche would be rice. I know how to put up rice. I put up a lot of rice. You know, a lot of different ways. I've done several videos on it. But the thing of it is, is, you know, I kept practicing and practicing and practicing and practicing, you know, till I got everything exactly right how I thought it should be, you know, and it takes time. It takes practice. And the last thing, 
I think that, you know, which is going to be very hard for a lot of people out there. So listen closely. You need to be the person in the family or in your circle of friends and family that says, I told you so. Now, we all don't want to be that one, and there's ways that you can do this and come across um, the wrong way, and there's ways that you can do this and you can come off the right way. You just don't want to blare it right out and just, you know, hey, Jimmy, I told you so, you know. You don't want to do it. You want to get involved into the conversation and everything else and then, you know, just politely throw it out there and just say, you know, we were talking about this and I told you something was going to happen. You know, that's how you want to put it across. Don't come across as you're a know-it-all because then nobody's going to want to listen to you. Okay? The one thing that I'm thankful for as having this community is I don't know it all. But a lot of people leave the comments and that's what it's there for because everybody can add to whatever i am talking about which is a beautiful thing it is absolutely a beautiful thing you think about it all right right now i have what i don't know 12 1300 subscribers in that in that neighborhood and so if i throw a topic out there People comment back that they've done it this way, they've done it that way, they've, you know, they didn't have luck doing it this way, uh, they like this way better. So everybody out there that is watching the video or reading the comments, you're getting all this great advice from all these different people and you're seeing how all these other people do it, which is really cool because this way here, you can say, well, you know what? I'm going to try. I want to try it that way. And maybe it won't work for you. Maybe you'll find that, ah, that just didn't work. Let me, somebody said to do it this way. So try it that way. And you may find, ah, you know what? That works for me. I feel comfortable doing that. And that's the whole name of the game. So this has been a video on basically how to really talk to your friends and family and introduce them to prepping and getting them involved into the prepping community without them hopefully even knowing it that this way here if something happens they'll be ready and they don't even know that they're considered a prepper isn't that a beautiful thing folks so i'm survival preparedness for beginners if anybody would like to comment on little ways that they may Get around things, what they may do, put it in the comments below. Please do me one favor. Hit that like button, share my video, hit subscribe, click that little bell, and until next time, I will catch you all on the flip side.